particular, I note that Jason Stein is late to his last, one of his last press conferences as today is his last day. So I am going to give him a hard time on that one that Jason Stein is not here or late. Um, I'm State Senator Jennifer Schilling, as you all know, and I am pleased to be here today to talk about food insecurity issues and uh, the troubling aspects of the Farm Bill and what is happening out uh, federally in Washington, D.C. Um, similar to the efforts that are being made by Governor Walker and the majority party here in Wisconsin, congressional Republicans are looking for ways to offset the cost of their massive corporate tax breaks by restricting access to public assistance programs. Included in the packets of material that you have received, we have provided a new memo from the Legislative Fiscal Bureau with, that details the impact of the 2018 House Farm Bill on children in Wisconsin who are currently enrolled in Food Share, which is Wisconsin's low-income food assistance program. The map here on my left, and it is interactive, so we have a website uh, that you will be available that at least we'll talk representative Zubek will talk about it is interactive uh, and it has a visual breakdown county by county of the percentage of children who will be uh, kicked off removed from food share if the house GOP farm bill is signed into law as you can see the move to restrict snap access will result in thousands of children across Wisconsin losing food share eligibility Many of these children and families are in the hardest hit areas and rural, which are often conservative leaning communities. In those rural communities, they are transportation challenged to, at times. They are employment challenged at times. They are community assistance challenged at times. And all told, Wisconsin families st stand to lose $23.8 million annually as an estimated 23,000 369 children would become ineligible for need-based food assistance under the House GOP Farm Bill. I think it's bad enough that Republicans have fought to give millionaires yet another tax break this season, uh, but then to turn around and deny low-income children access to food, it's unthinkable. I don't know how Republican politicians can justify these horribly misplaced priorities that favor the wealthy at the expense of vulnerable children. For anyone who has taken the time to listen to families, to talk with school counselors, and hear from local daycare providers, you know, you hear that, that childhood hunger is a very real and very serious issue in communities all across our state. No children should have to be forced to go hungry, and we certainly shouldn't be denying children access to nutrition simply to expand tax breaks for the wealthy. It's gotten to the point where local food pantries and shelters have become overwhelmed by the increased demand for help as Republicans continue to deny access uh, for families to food and uh, assistance. And with summer break just one month away, all of us as working parents with children enrolled in school, we are well aware of the last day of school coming up. Um, that is another heightened sense of awareness of food insecurity issues in summer months. And schools and community partners then look to prioritize and look to help with those that needed nutrition over those months when children uh, will not be in school. And sometimes schools are open for nutritious meals for those, for those students and families. One local group that is helping to feed children and families in the hunger t is the Hunger Task Force, and I'm glad to be joined by their executive director, Sherry Tussle, who is here to share her experience and the strains that these uh, changes will cause in local communities across Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry Tussler, executive director of Hunger Task Force. Hunger Task Force is uh, Wisconsin's leading anti-hunger public policy organization. We're based in Milwaukee, but we impact the entire state. The Farm Bill is up for grabs right now, and um, obviously it's a massive federal program that impacts um, both farmers and people who eat food, which means it impacts all of us. Um, the changes that the Trump administration and Congress are suggesting mirror a lot of the changes that have already passed legislatively here in the state of Wisconsin, which increases work requirements, uh, involves drug testing, and potentially has photo ID on food share. These changes are so dramatically different than the previous administration. I know that the Trump administration has put out there that the Obama administration just swelled the ranks of the food stamp program and they're trying to correct that by increasing work re requirements, creating additional barriers for people to be able to use SNAP, 
but the impact of um, those changes, what it really means is that children in Wisconsin will go hungry. Wisconsin is the dairy state. Wisconsin creates enough food to feed every single person that lives here, but one in four children in the city of Milwaukee is experiencing chronic hunger, and now we want to expand that hunger to rural areas across the state, suburban areas, by mandating that parents work um, if they have school-aged children, and um, by removing people from SNAP, which we see as um, a trampoline and not a hammock. Um, the challenge there is that um, working families have a lot on their plate. They need to not only pay their bills, maintain their jobs, but they have to get their kids back and forth to school. And the likelihood of um, these proposed changes in the Farm Bill replicating what we saw under the Food Stamp Employment and Training Act, which was a dramatic reduction in eligibility for food stamps, that will continue. We're going to see fewer and fewer people using the SNAP program, which doesn't make any sense because it's 100% federally funded. So we're losing federal dollars while we spend state dollars to create a program that literally is terrorizing low-income people. When kids don't get to eat, they don't learn. They're not productive in the workforce as adults. When parents have to worry about who's going to eat tonight, when parents have to decide to serve smaller meals or skip meals themselves in the dairy state, we have a significant problem. We uh, have a governor and a legislature that's talking about people on SNAP living in lake homes and driving fancy cars. That's not our experience. Um, and that's a lot of rhetoric that's being put out there um, that we hope that the media takes the time to debunk. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak and I'll hang around after the conference if anybody has any questions about public policy involving either SNAP or school meals. Our greatest concern obviously is with SNAP if categorical eligibility is removed. What that means is that parents who are on SNAP right now don't have to complete enrollment forms because the state can run a report between the Department of Public Instruction and the Department of Health Services and know that those kids are eligible, categorically eligible. When we take categorical eligibility away, that means that entire school systems have to move away from modernizing the um, way that they make kids eligible for programs and go back to paper and pencil forms, which increase costs and creates those additional barriers for the parents so the kids lose. Children should never lose. Children should always have three meals a day. And sadly, in Milwaukee and in Wisconsin, that is not the case. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Um, I'm State Representative Lisa Subak, and I have had a front row seat as a member of a number of the committees that some of the really bad bills that have come through the Wisconsin legislature that harm our children and families um, have gone through. And what Republicans are doing now at the federal level with these changes to food share eligibility in the Farm Bill continues a pattern that we have seen on the part of Republicans right here in Wisconsin of kicking low-income working families when they are already down. Wisconsinites are going to work every day. We see and hear from our constituents who are working hard to make ends meet. But with stagnant wages and the environment that Republicans have created, these families are living paycheck to paycheck. They're unable to make ends meet and they're in need of a little bit of extra help to stretch their paychecks and put food on the table for their families. A woman visited my office last week. Um, folks from Head Start were here for their day of action, and families whose kids participate in those Head Start programs came and spoke to us in our offices. One woman shared with me her story. She works as a shift manager. She is, as she put it, in management at a fast food restaurant. She picks up extra shifts whenever they are available to her and when she has child care to be able to cover them. Yet, even working full-time and picking up extra shifts, she makes barely over minimum wage and counts on programs like food share and school lunches that her children receive to help feed her family. What Governor Walker and Republicans have done here in our state will already serve to make life harder for moms like the one who visited my office. And now this move by Republicans in Congress will result in 23,000 more children in Wisconsin families like hers losing their food share assistance. 
and according to our legislative fiscal bureau likely losing their eligibility for free or reduced cost school lunches as well. By failing to have addressed stagnant and depressed wages and failing to create an economy that provides opportunities for hardworking families to get ahead, Republicans have failed the working families of our state. Now their proposed farm bill will add insult to injury, literally taking, foods out, taking food out of the mouths of 23,000 children statewide in both urban and rural communities across our state. That is why we are here today, calling upon Wisconsin's congressional delegation to act on behalf of Wisconsin's children and families, to make changes to the Farm Bill, to put a stop to this needless and cruel action by the Trump administration and Republicans in Congress. If no changes are made to this Farm Bill, it will be incumbent upon us as state legislators to be prepared to address the crisis that will be caused by 23,000 children across the state losing access to food, having food taken off of their tables and out of their mouths. With that, I will go ahead and open it up to questions. Um, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Yes. You know, based on the information that we have, they would immediately lose their current eligibility. Some of them may or may not be able to reapply. Um, having dealt with that process actually many years ago when I was working with preschool programs that did that prior to when we had this sort of presumptive eligibility if you're on food share, um, the paperwork's a nightmare, and it is hoops to jump through. I mean, it is in many ways big government at its worst. Um, it was smart to say families are eligible for food share and therefore eligible for free and reduced lunch um, to make families who are working hard, families like the one I talked about, who are working full time plus some, to then jump through additional hoops in hopes that they might just qualify is shameful. They, if the paperwork doesn't get this. completed, you're not eligible. It's okay. as simple as that. And so the parents would have to complete paperwork. Um, but what this really means is that we are taking a step backwards from modernization. Mm -hmm. And we modernized um, eligibility for school districts and schools who have income area eligibility for their kids. Mm -hmm. And so we could get away with a whole host of, or excuse me, do away with a whole host of people who have to process and enter data, pencil and paper forms, that sometimes handwriting is a struggle. Um, and so if the data isn't entered and doesn't match the state's Department of Public Instruction, the children aren't eligible. The data already exists at the Department of Health Services. Match it, make the kids eligible. Yeah, Taking and that step backwards just doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, these families would also be losing eligibility, and in many ways an incentive to work for their food share benefits because they would no longer continue to be eligible for those within their current employment situation. So it actually disincentivizes in many ways the opportunities the families might have to get ahead. Other questions? So my understanding, there will be the states will be given a federal block grant to cover the costs of administering the, the work requirements and and the, the broad protections. Can, can you speak to that and as to whether that's even going to be adequate to meet the costs? Well, block grants run out of money, and it's as simple as that. You get some sufficient amount of money. You have a bigger plan, like our governor has, cost ninety million dollars just to implement the nine reforms that have already been approved excluding the children, uh, we're going to run out of money. There's a lot of agencies, and some of them are for-profit corporations, who are the winners in this because they make the money while they monitor the activity of low-income people or issue them a picture ID or drug test them. But when the money runs out, the money runs out. I think our first ask today is that there are changes that Republicans change the Farm Bill and look to address it. Uh, if they don't, uh, and it's passed as it is, then in Wisconsin, we need to then step up and how do we address this working with uh, the agencies that address 
family and children's issues and looking to support that. And so, like it was mentioned, it, it seems really, really cruel to think about 23,000 children becoming ineligible. And just a week ago, I was celebrating the school nutrition program at Holman Evergreen Elementary School and the great work that these kids and school officials and partnerships of Hunger Task Force are doing on food insecurity issues with breakfasts and lunches and with school ending right around the corner. And then beyond that, in September when families go back to school, again, not being eligible for this, it has an impact on family health, on work, worker productivity, uh, children's um, uh, achievement levels and testing scores that you can't concentrate when your belly is grumbling. You can't concentrate and do well when you don't know where your next meal is gonna come from. And so it is imperative that we step up and that we take care of our most, eligible, our most vulnerable in this state, but I think it highlights the misplaced priorities of the Republicans and that they can turn their back on families living in the margins in our communities that are working, that are playing by the rules. And then to remove this rug underneath them from, from them is incredibly cruel and heartless. Any other questions? Thank you all.